Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from, from patron Richard Baker. And he says, hi, Dave, I'm building a two transformer antenna that'll be a match for an off-center fed wire antenna for 80 meters. One transformer is a four to one ballon. The other is a one to one current choke, a none. That means unbalanced, unbalanced. Your thoughts about packaging these two, please, sir. I'm curious about possible interference between their windings and cores. One of the cool things about using toroid cores is that the magnetic field, by and large, stays inside the core and doesn't interfere with other uh, toroid-based transformers nearby. If you are concerned about it, you can put each one up rather than side by side, but put one up and then the other one twist it like that. They'll be orthogonal to each other. The ballon is to match the 200 ohm feed point on the OCF wire to 50 ohms. It's about the one third point, I believe. The onion is to attenuate shield currents going back to the station. I'm hoping to package all along with hanging and connecting hardware with two PVC end cap assembly. Thanks for your time and thoughts from N5 KXA Richard Baker. Let me correct one thing here. The ballon, he says, is to match the current, and then the next one is an unun. No, it should be a ballon. There shouldn't be a connection between the two. But let's draw out what he's trying to do. Okay, so he's got a wire that goes this length here, and this is for 80 meters, so it's about 132 feet long, about. And he's not going to feed it at the center. Not going to feed it that way. He's going to feed it at the, I think, about the one-third point. To do that, the impedance, remember the impedance is just the ratio of the voltage divided by the current. The minimum impedance is at the center. As you move out, the voltage begins to rise until it's quite high at the ends and the current goes down as it gets to the ends. Now, that's a rough approximation because if the thing is radiating 100%, the current and the voltage must be in phase. So there's a lot going on in an antenna, but he's gonna do it here in the input impedance is about 400 ohms. Now, one thing to consider, there is a reactance associated with this. So I'm just gonna put a theta right there to note that this is not purely resistive. Now the standard way this is done is you put a four to one ballon, so it's 50 ohms here, and usually put like a current uh, ballon in here. Okay, 50 to 200 ohms, okay? That's four to one ballon, which means the turns ratio is two to one. Now this is still balanced. So you're gonna go balanced to balanced. Now what you need to do is you've got this coax coming in here. It's 50 ohms unbalanced because the outer shield is at, in theory, zero potential. So what you need here is a one-to-one -one ballon. Okay, you want this side to be a ballon, so it'll be 50 here and 50 here. So it's a one-to-one, -one, okay? And you go 50 to 50, you're separated now from that, and now you're up into here. And the question comes, why can't you just go up into here? Well, this is usually a current ballon, and you want something that's balanced to balanced. Anyway, this is the way they're made. The reference station antenna for years has been the MFJ 2010, which is an off-center fed dipole, exactly like the one that you're constructing there with all the same types of dimensions and so on. Unfortunately, with MFJ going out of business, they're becoming very hard to get. Now that ballon covers all of 40 meters, all of 20 meters, a good part of 10 meters, and some in the lower six meter region, all of which can be used by a general. It's a nice antenna, it's under $100. I looked at other options. You could make a fan dipole or you could do something like the ARRL's kit for an N-fed 40 meter antenna that'll cover all of 40, 20, 15, and 10. 
If you lengthen that out to 80 meters, you can pick up uh, 17 and 12 and possibly a little bit on 30, but nothing on 60. 60 uh, doesn't have a good harmonic relationship really with any ham band. That would be, I think, what you should do. So this is a picture right here of the ballon that is inside. You see that there are two ballons. One is the one to separate the coax shield from connecting in, and the other is to actually do the transformer action. One is a voltage ballon, the other is a current ballon. Okay, so that allows us to basically, what you're building here is an off-center fed dipole. It's very like other off-center fed dipoles. Now this is fed at the one-third point. Okay, so this distance is two-thirds, this distance is one-third. There are other that have it at the one quarter point. So this becomes three quarters, this becomes a single quarter. Uh, these seem to be the most popular and you can get them, like I said, very inexpensively, okay? I want to show you one other thing and you might be able to use this to your advantage. If this is the winding on the coax side and this is grounded, okay? then you can create another winding on this side, here and here, and these are connected at the center. Now, if you do that, it's still a ballon, but it does mean that this now is electrically grounded. So when you go to your antenna or whatever you do there, you can still bleed off the static charge that comes uh, from an antenna in the wind. This is how, uh, this is a voltage ballon, that's how they're made. I would recommend one other thing. Don't actually cement the caps, the PVC caps on your piece of pipe until you're sure you've got it working. And then go ahead and cement them. Now I will warn you that no matter how airtight that thing is, it will eventually fill with water. So if you start having trouble with it, check to see if it's full of water. Now you won't be able to pull the end caps off. What a lot of people uh, do is drill what they call a weep hole, W-E-E-P, weep hole, uh, toward one end or the other, it's only about an eighth of an inch. It just needs to go through that plastic. And what happens normally is the plastic's in the sun, it gets quite warm in there during the day. And then at night it cools quite a bit. And as it cools, the moisture inside can condense. Now, it's gonna suck in some outside air. Believe me, there's always a way in to equalize the pressure. Then when it gets hot again, it forces out the excess air and then does a repetition. So you keep sucking in air as it gets cool and the water condenses and forms in the thing. I remember when I was in the Air Force, we had an ANFSP 90. If I got the numbers right, I don't know if I did. That was 50 years ago. But it was a height finder radar and there was a box on the front. It was a solid metal box and it had a gasket and sufficient holes to really tie that thing down. And no matter what we did, there was always water in the box. So finally we drilled a couple little wee holes in the bottom and the problem went away. So it would stay nice and dry in the box and that'll, that'll help here too. There's other examples of, of ways you can do this to keep water from gathering inside. I actually, when I got the ARRL uh, unit, I did drill one wee pole in the bottom to make that work. So there you have a good luck with your antenna project. Like I said, uh, there are multiple ways to construct this, multiple ways to get a DC ground out of this so that you can bleed off the static and so on. It's just lots of good things that you can do. So there you have it. And until we next meet, 73.